All right, welcome back, sixth grade uh, world history students here at Pasetti Bay. We're going to start up the video for lesson three of chapter one and two. We're going to be focusing on geography, economics, citizenship, though today is specifically geography. Why does it matter? Why do I have to know where I am? How does that help us understand our place in the world and how we interact with the world? All right, it actually starts off with a hot question, a little bit different. We're going to do this one at the beginning. How do we dress differently for winter in Florida than if we lived in New York? New York City, New York State, either one, your pick. And why? Uh, I'm not going to really try to explain anything. I want you guys to answer that one completely on your own. Just remember the basic rules for a hot question. All right, you cannot start with pronouns. You can't say we dress differently. All right, no pronouns. Minimum of three sentences. We're looking for more from advanced. We're looking for trying to get you guys up to hopefully five sentences. That's going to be the goal. So remember those rules for your hot question. Complete sentences, the appropriate number of sentences, and do not start with pronouns. All right, guys. Um, in your packet, you'll see a chart with uh, space for three different terms. Um, so it's, it's not going to completely match up from this slide to your packet, but I'll explain what you need to do. The first term you're going to see is the term latitude. And the definition of latitude are horizontal lines that circle the Earth parallel to the equator. Um, the equator is one of the lines of latitude. It measures zero. And sometimes I think the easiest way to think about latitude lines, it's almost like belts going around the Earth. The next term you'll see, or the next term you want to put in, is for longitude. These are imaginary lines that circle the Earth from north to south, measuring distance from east or west of the prime meridian. When we measure Longitude, we prime meridian serves as the zero point, and we go east and west from there. Combining latitude and longitude helps us pinpoint exact places on the Earth. And there you can see the longitude lines running north to south from pole to pole. Okay, displaying the Earth's surface. Hemisphere, a half sphere used to refer to one half of the earth when divided into north and south or east and west. So as you can see in this picture on the left-hand side, the equator, um, that line of latitude, slices the earth in half and gives you the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. Then when you look at the picture at the right, you have um, a line of longitude, the prime meridian, which is slicing the Earth into the Western Hemisphere and the Eastern Hemisphere. And we have the five themes of geography. Our five themes are region, location, place, movement, and interaction. Okay, so to go with those themes, and the themes of geography are the ways that we look at geography. We look at where is it? What do they do there? You know, just all the ways that we can look at it. There are six essential elements that we also consider. Um, how can we understand the, the relationship between people and places in their environment? Geography tells us why people live the way they live. For instance, if you live on the seashore, you're going to be really good at fishing, as opposed to somebody who lives in the plains you're going to be really good at hunting so or in the woods. So it's very different. So in spatial terms, where are we in the world? So we look at the places in the region. What makes it special to live in that region? It's very different if you live in Florida or you live in New York. It's, or it, for that matter, Florida or Alaska. What makes it special to be in Florida? What makes it special to be in Alaska? And we all know those things, but historians and geographers, they look at it a little more closely and see how does that really affect people that live in that area? What can they do? What do they develop? What technology do they have that another place may not have? Then they look at the physical systems. How does nature affect how they live on that on the earth's surface? So nature definitely plays a part in where and how people live. Do you live in a cave? Well, certainly not. If you live in the desert, you got to find somewhere else to live. You can't live in a cave like you could in the woods. So your physical systems and what is on the earth right where you live, that definitely makes a difference on what you do and how you live there. But then we have human interaction with the earth. 
what have the humans done to it? Did they cut down all the forest and now we don't have a place for the animals to live? Or did they mine out all the gold? Or for that matter, did they plant a whole bunch of trees and make it where people can have more vegetation than they used to have? So there's all kinds of things that could happen there. But then how does the relationship between people and their surroundings influence their lifestyle? Well, people in our surroundings, um, if you live in New York, your lifestyle is probably going to be you don't have a car. I know that seems really odd. There'd be 3,000 other people living in the building that you live in. That seems really odd to us. Where when you live in a little in a smaller area like ours, you got to have a car to get places. Yeah, I could walk to Publix, but I don't want to. That's a long way. So our environment definitely shapes how we live. And we use those um, themes of geography and the elements of geography to understand why people do what they do and they live where they live. So going forward, those people, we studied their culture. Historians study the population and culture and the movement of those things around, of people. Why do they move? How do their ideas move around? How do they change? So the population, what do they do? The people, do they migrate? Do they live in a different place? How many people live there? How do they go from place to place? And then the culture, that's where it really gets fun. When we start studying why a group of people in one area believe something that other people in another area don't, or why do one group of Indians practice one way to become an adult and another group of Indians maybe practice a different way to say that this person is now an adult? Around here, we say when you turn 18, you know, our tradition, our culture is that you're supposed to be an adult now because you're 18. Well, some people have arrived at 18 and some people haven't. It takes them a little longer, you know, maybe you got to wait old to get a little older. But that's what we traditionally believe. And so all of those ideas and things that spread around and how people do things differently is called cultural diffusion. It's the spread of goods. Maybe I make special clothing because I to keep you really warm from Alaska. And maybe people that live in Washington need that. It gets cold there too. And I show them how to make clothing better than they did before. Or And then maybe you can plant really good crops, but I don't know how to plant crops. It's too cold in Alaska. And I moved down here. You show me how to plant crops. That exchange of ideas and that exchange of goods from place to place through migration, through exploration, and through trade is called cultural diffusion. Now, I'm really not big on this kind of teaching method, but here we go. Everybody say with me. Cultural diffusion. I want you to put like three stars around that circle it, highlight it. I need that to be puffing off the page. When I look at your video notes, when you come to class, we all want to know that you know what cultural diffusion is because that is the theme of sixth grade world history. How do these goods and ideas and people move around the world and shape the world that we live in through exploration, migration, and trade? All right, there you go, historians. I'm hoping to see great notations annotations in class your notes marked up so that we know that you are listening and that you know what's going on in our class bye historians